This is alignment yoga. I'm not going to be a ton of flow tonight and we're gonna work um, mostly like hips and hamstrings, glutes and see or the attention of the class tonight is just for you to feel what you're feeling in those muscle groups. Um, I'm not gonna put a ton of vinyasa flows in tonight. If you feel like you want to do them, do them. Um, and I can't see you, you're at home, so take care of yourselves, be gentle with yourself when you need to. Um, and just keep checking in with your body and see what's happening right here, right now, breath to breath. And that's really your best guide. So. Um, I'm stealing this from an instructor who I can't remember who it is at the moment, but your body, if you think of it like a sweater, if you're always pulling on the sweater in one direction, it gets kind of like thick and lumpy in that, like the fabric moves in that direction and that fabric has to pull from somewhere else. And sometimes in yoga, we do a lot of that. We do a lot of the same poses over and over again. Um, so I'm going to try to counter some of those and get you in and out of those poses in a couple different ways. You might like it, you might not. So just notice what you're noticing moment to moment, breath to breath. All right. So come over to your yoga mat. I'm going to give you an option of how to start. So you can start with pigeon on your back, which would be right ankle cross over the left thigh. And you can stay right here or lift that leg up. If you feel like you want something a little bit different, you're going to start right in pigeon pose on your yoga mat. Right knee wider than the right hip, right shin. It can be on a pretty generous diagonal. It's early in class. Tuck your left toes under, scooch your buns back, and then fold any amount. So on a scale of 1 to 10, you don't need to be in like, and 11. <laughs> Keep it kind of neutral, somewhere soft that you can breathe and just start to feel what's going on in that right hip early, early on in class. You can close your eyes or gaze down the tip of your nose and breathe. So if you're just tuning in, we're starting in hip opener either Prone pigeon, right leg forward, or pigeon on your back. And if the head starts to wander to what's going on outside of my voice and outside of the four corners of your yoga mat, try to bring your awareness back to your body. Notice the quality of your spine wherever you are. And then switch sides. So your version of pigeon on the left, looking for perhaps a little opening left glute maybe on some of this is of some of us this will trickle into the IT band some might feel it in their calves but know that left and right side will not be identical so don't try to make them that way try to bring some activity to your feet, whether they're pointed or flexed.
and take the next several breaths to make your way to a seat. So if you're on your back, uncross the legs, roll to one side. If you're in prone pigeon, sometimes you can just slide onto that left hip. And sit in easy pose, which isn't always that easy. So if you like, take your towel or your uh, throw from the couch, slide it under your glutes. Hands free if you can, switch the cross of the legs. And switch. And if you can keep the top of the pelvis leaning forward, more power to you, do it. And switch. And switch. Switch. And then this time, start to bring legs out to the side. You can take your peace fingers to your big toes if you like, or maybe you hold behind the thighs and start to extend the legs out any, um, any amount. Point the toes, lower the knees, uh, lower the feet, bend the knees, flex the feet, re-extend the legs out. Try to keep lifting the chest up towards the ceiling. Bend, point, extend the legs, and then cross back over the ankles, easy pose. Go ahead, stretch your left arm up overhead, side bend, and then slow and controlled, Walk those hands in front of the legs. Lean over your left thigh, maybe a little side body stretch. Be really gentle with the neck. Keeping the left hand down, open, right arm up. Towards where the ceiling meets the wall. Neck is neutral. And then fold back in. Use your core to keep your low back stable. So you walk the hands back across to where you started. Roll yourself up. Right arm up overhead. Side bend over towards your left. Chin back. Core engaged. And then walk your hands across the top of your yoga mat. When your right hand lands on the outside of your right hip, open the left arm up. Squeeze shoulder blades together. Lots of energy through the fingertips. Left arm sweeps back over. Fold over the right leg. You're not hanging totally limp, but you're not super engaged either. Find that sweet spot. And part of yoga is learning how to give our all and how to back off. And walk the hands back to center. Roll yourself up. And then come to hands and knees on your yoga mat. So facing the short edge. Shoulders stacked over the wrists, hips over the knees. Go ahead, extend the left leg back behind you. Try to keep the navel moving up towards the sky. And then round the spine like you're doing cat pose, knee into nose. And then extend left leg forward. Go ahead, bring your hands to blocks if you have them. So option, we're in half splits or runner's pose. You can stay right here. If you want a little more movement, go ahead, bring your hands to heart center, lift the torso up. Left toes flared. You might leave a wobble like me. Squeeze the back of the left thigh. Hip hinge, put a gentle bend in the left knee. And then go ahead, lift yourself back up. So, starting to engage the back of the left leg. And 
And I'm trying to keep my spine pretty neutral. So whether you're moving or you're staying still, you don't want too much round or too much arch in the low back. All right, wherever you are in your runner's pose, we're going to turn it into gate pose. So you're swiveling towards your right, right hip stacked over the right knee. My left foot is down on the yoga mat. Go ahead, stretch both arms up. Left hand down, or I guess, no, right hand down. I'm not mirroring you right now. And go ahead, lift the left heel up. Stretch that top arm over your top ear. Pulse the top leg that's in the air. Squeeze both glutes. Lower left foot down. Go ahead, stretch both arms up. Anjaneyasana facing the front of the mat where we started. So you're in a lunge. Left knee stacked over the left ankle, right hip over the right knee. Squeeze both feet in towards one another, widen thighs side to side, chest up, arms up. No, you can always skip the arms if the breath is getting choppy. Back toes tucked under, if they're not already, go ahead and lift, right knee up. And then swivel all 10 toes to face the long edge of your yoga mat. Bring your hands to your hips. Squeeze your feet in towards one another. If your knees are locked out, soften them. Pull the low abdominals up. Hip hinge, just like you did in your half splits. Collarbones broaden. Squeeze shoulder blades together on your back. Bend the right knee. Keep the left leg straight. So like a speed skater. Your shift, hips shift towards your right foot, and then come back through center, bend the left knee. Keep the right leg straight. Tailbone and crown of the head move away from one another. Right knee bends, left leg straightens. Collarbones broad. Switch sides, left knee bends, right leg straightens. Two bent legs, so it's a really wide kind of squat. And then walk the hands out in front of you. Hands on block or blocks if you like. It's like downward facing dog arms, straight legs, a little bit of a stretch, but nothing crazy intense. Can you engage the backs of your thighs? as you root your heels down. Quads pull up into the belly. Go ahead, walk yourself back around to the top of your yoga mat. Step back, downward facing dog. Upside down V, bend the knees. If you feel like um, tight in the back of the thighs, or if you know you have spinal um, sensitivities or injuries, give yourself a bend. Knees come down to the yoga mat. Find neutral, cushion your knees if you like. Right leg extends back behind you. Find neutral in the spine. Find some lift in the right thigh. Notice if the left hip wants to pop out to the left, squeeze it in. And then bend the right knee in towards the nose, round the spine, and bring the right foot forward. Look for your blocks or whatever you got, throw pillows, and find half splits. Right heel presses down into the yoga mat. Right sit bone pulls back. You can stay right here or hands to heart center. If you want more of a challenge, arms up overhead 
and start to hip hinge. Your longer lever with arms up overhead, so notice if, whoop, if that affects your range of motion. Squeeze right heel back towards the right hip. And you're doing all the same actions even if you are still. Checking in with your breath. Avoiding locking out that front knee. And then eventually coming to neutral, bending that right knee. Anjana Asana, chest up, arms up. We'll do gate pose in a moment. Feel that right foot planted firmly on the yoga mat. Glutes forward, navel back, chest up. Notice where the weight in your feet are, weight in your both weight in both of your feet is. Sometimes all the weight goes into like one toe or one side of the foot. Can you spread it out? And then go ahead, bring your hands down. Mindfully, bring the right knee down to the yoga mat. Left foot comes down to the yoga mat. Sorry to turn my back to you. Right hand down, left arm up overhead. Stretch left arm over your ear. You can stay right here or lift left leg up. Squeeze the back of the left thigh. Pulse the left leg. Squeeze both glutes. Broad across the chest. So notice where you find contraction and where you find opening. Where is their effort and where is their ease? Bring it back to gate pose, left foot down, stretch both arms up, heart over hips. And then mindfully bring the arms to the top of the yoga mat. Bring your right foot back to meet the left, downward facing dog. Knees bent or straight. Walk your hands backwards towards your feet. Fold, bend the knees if the hamstrings feel a little tight or you feel any tugging on your low back. Widen your inner thighs side to side, root down through the feet. Bend the knees a couple of inches and slowly roll one vertebrae at a time up to standing. And then when you're at the top, find neutral, knees can straighten. Hands to heart center or stretched up overhead, right knee lifts, grounded through the left leg. Look forward towards the top of your yoga mat or straight in front of you. We're going forward. You're going to step your right foot forward into a lunge. And then pretend like your left thigh is like an elevator going to the ceiling. That's going to lift up. You're going to sink down into the right hip. So we're looking for squareness. Bend the left knee if that lets you find neutral pelvis. Inhale fully. On the exhale, you're going to look forward, take off into warrior three. So keep that neutrality in the pelvis as much as you can. Left toes can absolutely stay down on the yoga mat for more support. Otherwise, find more of your hip hinge. Arms forward if you need more. Chant more of a challenge for your breath. 
What are your hamstrings doing? Step the left foot all the way back. Anjaneyasana, lower that left knee down. You're welcome to stay right here for the next couple of breaths if you like. Otherwise, take back off into warrior three. And maybe this is an exploration of, again, not finding your max end range each time. And then step it back. One more time, take flight, warrior three. Whoop. Right leg's getting tired. And then step back. Crescent lunge with your back knees down, lift it up. Arms stretch up. Frame the front foot. Step back, plank pose. Get weighty in the hands and the feet. Navel lifts up, pretend your shoulders are glued to the ceiling. Stretch the heart forward, bend the elbows. Lower all the way down to the yoga mat. Uncurl the toes. Collarbones lift up. Baby cobra, squeeze the heels of the hands backwards towards your toes. Keep contracting the hamstrings the same way you were when you were in your half splits. And then tuck the toes under. Push back to child's pose for a moment. Knees narrow or wide. You're looking for a more neutral spine. Go knees wide. And know that you can come here anytime you need a break. Downward facing dog. You can also use child's pose or hands and knees in place of down dog. Inner thighs swivel up and back towards the wall behind you. Bend the knees, everyone. And super mindfully walk one hand back at a time. Like really press into the hand as it lands and then use the other one. Press in, maybe the opposite hand hovers. Like you're trying to lose a race to get back to your feet. And when you find them, fold, lengthen, stretch. This time, Coming up through neutral, hands to hips, collarbones widen, halfway lift. So looking for a more or less flat spine, oh, flattish spine. You still will have some curves in there, but no big round or arch. And then go ahead, lift yourself up to standing. Stretch arms up, or can't bring them to heart center. Left knee lifts. Root down through that right inseam of the left, right leg. You're moving forward, so use the strength of your right leg to step the left foot forward. You land in a lunge. Right knee can always come down. I tend to have a lot of curve in my low back, so I'm going to bend my right knee so I can get this front thigh more parallel without tugging or pulling on my low back. Hands up or down, warrior three. So squeeze the left leg straight. Could I have a micro bend in the knee. Squeeze the right thigh to find some lift. And then step it back, Anjaneyasana. Right knee comes down. Remember, you can stay right here. Plenty of actions to work here. Hugging the feet in, squeezing the thighs. Take off warrior three. Notice if your weight wants to pop out to the left on the left hip, squeeze it into center, press into the inside of the left foot. Right inseam hugs in towards your midline. Step back, Anjaneyasana. Take off again, warrior three. Notice where the weight goes on the left foot. 
This time, step it back, crescent lunge. So if your back knee is down, go ahead, lift yourself up. Good. Hands frame the front foot, step back to plank pose. Bring your big toes to touch, so you're walking your legs in. Knees can absolutely come down if you like. Feel the connection of legs hugging in towards one another, whether you're in plank or a plank with knees down. Keep that squeeze, downward facing dog. Look forward to the top of your mat. Maybe you want to lift the heels high, bend the knees out wide, left and right, and jump forward. Or just take a stroll to the top of your yoga mat. Forward fold. Neutral spine, halfway lift. I'm doing hands on hips, elbows bent. You can do whatever our variation works for you. Press into the feet, come up to standing. Go ahead, interlace your hands at your low back, elbows bend. If you want to straighten, go ahead. Press into the balls and the heels of the feet, arches lift, spread the toes, hip hinge. Coming back to that halfway lift shape, like you're doing a deadlift, squeeze the hamstrings, lift yourself back up. Halfway lift, or halfway fold. Let the hands come down. Let's keep left foot forward, step right foot back to a lunge. Walk the left foot out to the left a little bit. We're going to come into lizard pose. So, hands can come to blocks if you like, if the floor feels far away. Right knee can come down for more support. If you need more hip stretch, bend the elbows. Notice if one side of your rib cage is a lot higher than the other side. Try to shimmy maybe that left side a little bit lower. Feel your neck and head in space, even though the hips are probably the focus of the pose. From here, hands on blocks, or you can bring the hands to the shin, the front shin if you don't have them. Pyramid pose, two straight legs. Your right heel does not have to touch the yoga mat. It can hover, just don't put too much pressure on your Achilles tendon. So you put a little softness behind the knees, hands more or less under the shoulders unless they're holding onto that front shin. And just like we did in our half splits, don't lock out that front knee. Keep it soft. Folding any amount. Look forward, bend the left knee. We're gonna step forward into chair pose. So the right leg's gonna come parallel and make the same shape as the left. Chest up, arms up, or at heart center. Press into the feet, stand up. Sink the hips, chair. Feel the backs of your thighs as you press up to standing. Straight legs, bent legs, knees, yeah, bend into chair. Press up to standing. 
root into the right leg. We're gonna come into tree pose. So, I'll turn to face you. Right leg down, left toes can stay on the inside of the left ankle, or they can lift up somewhere. Either way, wherever you are, you're looking for a little bit of opening on the left hip, and you're hugging the right hip into center. And then do something with your arms that feels right for you right now. All right, go ahead, come out of that tree pose. If you need to wiggle around at your feet or shake it out a little bit, go for it. Go ahead, stretch arms up overhead. Swan dive, arms stretch out to the sides, heels lift if you like, fold all the way forward. Heels up or down, halfway lift. Plant the palms, step back, plank pose. Without legs touching, still find that squeezing in motion and lift back to down dog. Thighs press back. Notice what's working in the body and what's not. Sit bones root down to heels. Bring yourself to the top of your yoga mat as few or as many steps as it takes. Halfway lift. Fold. You're breathing. Stretch arms up overhead. Let's go right into the tree pose on this side before we do the rest of the sequence. So root the inner left uh, thigh down into the yoga mat. Right leg opens up, bent right knee. Notice if you feel any like kind of crinkliness in the right hip. You can weeble wobble that right leg around until you find the spot that works for you tonight. And if everything feels like a little stuck, like a cog in a, in a wheel that's just off a little bit, that's okay too. Right foot comes down to meet the left. Bend the right knee, step the left foot back, lizard pose. Hands to the inside of the right leg, left knee up or down. Uh, but there's still some lift in the pelvis. So a lot of times, especially if you're super flexible, what you want to do in this pose is kind of just like splay out and let this left hip drop. Find a, a lifting up. So you have to um, bring your awareness to lifting the left hip up. There's some action happening there. And if you're really stiff and tight and it takes all of your effort just to make anything that kind of looks like a lizard pose, then don't worry about that. Wherever you are, press your right foot firmly into the ground. spine and space. Does anything feel particularly arched or rounded in one way or the other? Pyramid pose. So right hand to the outside of the right leg. If you like to bring your left heel down, you can, but you don't have to jam it down. If the left heel is high, don't worry about it. Try to get long in your right waist. Swivel your left thigh in towards the right. So there's all these micro actions happening that I can't see. You might not even be able to see them, but you should probably be able to feel them. And knowing the degree of fold here is up to you. Look forward, bend the right knee, bring the left foot in 
to match the right. So chair pose, chest up. Press into the feet, straighten the legs. And then just a couple of times, kick your heels back towards your glutes. Kind of like a cat. Almost like you could flick the yoga mat back behind you. And as you do that, feel the backs of your thighs contract. Kind of like warrior three, next time you land on the left foot, stay there. Right heel squeezes in as much as it can. If this is taking all of your efforts, stay right here. You don't have to do anything else. Otherwise, find your hip hinge into your warrior three. Re-extend the right leg straight. You can flex the foot or point, whatever works for you. Or maybe you do the opposite of what you normally do. Squeeze right heel into the right glute. Go ahead, lift yourself back up. Notice the right thigh, we want to pop forward, get it in line with the left, hip hinge. Use the strength of your left thigh. Extend the right leg out behind you. Squeeze it back in. Left leg lifts you back up to neutral spine. Right foot comes down. A couple of flicks back. Let it go. The comment. Keep kicking back. Ah. Hi, Christine. All right. Next time you land on the right leg, squeeze left heel in towards the left glute. Trying to stay more or less in neutral, both hip points facing forward. And then hip hinge. You might feel like your pelvis has to move back in space a little bit or maybe forward, find your just enough spot. Re-extend the left leg out. If you want to bring the arms into it overhead, go for it. Squeeze left heel back in, back to standing on one leg. We're down through the inner right foot, hip hinge. Re-extend the left leg. Squeeze left heel into the left glute. Press up to standing, left foot down, stretch both arms up overhead, heels up or down, swan dive, arms stretch out to the sides, hip hinge, fold, halfway lift. Plant the palms, make your way back to plank pose. And then lift yourself up, downward facing dog. Pause for a few breaths, so if you need a different pose to pause in, do that. Make your way onto your belly, however you want to get there. First quad stretch, left forearm across the top of your yoga mat. Kick right heel to right glute. You can stay pretty low here. Uh, if you can't reach right hand to right ankle, this is a great place to be. You're making that same shape we just did standing. If you can, hug right heel into the right glute. So you're trying to close the knee joint. Some of you might be able to take your palm to the big toe side of the right foot, lift shoulder up, lift elbow up, spin, palm of the hand over the toes. Looking for a stretch in the front of the right thigh. If all of the effort is in your spine, back off a little bit. Feel your breath, feel where you might be overdoing it. Is there anywhere you're underdoing it that's fallen asleep? And then gently release that side. Right forearm across the top of the yoga mat. Remember, chest can be low. I'm lifting mine up high, mostly so you can hear me. Um, left hand reaches back. Maybe it hovers on the outside of the left ankle. Maybe it hugs left heel into left glute. Maybe you go palm to the big toe side of the left foot and then spin the palm around the 
toenails and your unpainted toes to the front of your yoga mat. And what's happening now in your body? Go ahead, release both hand, uh, both feet down, hands by your low ribs. Roll the shoulders up and back, cobra pose. You're welcome to stay here in your baby cobra. If it's interesting to you, tuck the toes under and lift yourself up to upward facing dog, but we can't see me. Toes curled under. So you're squeezing both legs in towards each other like we did in plank, hip strap, collarbones back, chest forward, and then downward facing dog. Left leg stretches up behind you. Step left foot by the left thumb, crescent lunge, chest up, arms up. <laughs> I fall down all the time. And now that I'm doing yoga at home, at home all the time, there's a lot more falling down. Go ahead, right arm forward, left arm back. You can release the back knee down for more support if you like. You can stay right here or stretch right arm up, left arm towards the right thigh. Squeeze feet in towards one another. Find some stretch in the inner thighs. Bending into that front knee. The back knee is down. Go ahead, lift it up. We're going to swivel around to triangle pose. So turn towards the long edge of your yoga mat. You just unravel yourself. Kick the hips back in space. Just like when we were almost doing like a deadlift before, do that now on your legs. Left. Hand down, right arm up. And if you're like me and you can't help but hyperextend the knees, soften them a little. Keep your arms this wide, go ahead, lift. Torso up, stretch left arm up towards the ceiling, right hand down on the right thigh. Go ahead, bend the left knee, coming back to lizard pose, hands to the inside of the left leg, right knee comes down. If this is already a lot of work for you, stay right here. I'm going to push in my back knee. You want a quad stretch. I'm turning my left toes out to the left about 20 degrees or so. So the whole like left hip, left knee, left toes, I'll turn to the left. Kick right heel to the right glute. Stay right here or stretch left arm back. And if left hand and right foot never connect, no big deal. If you've caught them, you can start to bend the elbows away from one another. But you get off the bus wherever you like. You're breathing. You can still feel pressing down into your left foot. And then hands come to the top of the yoga mat, downward facing dog. Pause, feel. And notice outside of the legs, what do you feel in your body? Does anything need a little more sensitivity, a little more caring? Does anything need to be worked a little bit harder? And those answers come from body and not head. Look forward. Right foot forward. Crescent lunge. Back knee can release down for more support if you like. Hug feet in towards one another. Bend and stretch into the right knee. Left arm forward, right arm back. But the, the hips don't 
Create the pose. Hips are still facing forward, upper body rotates. Stay right here, or a right hand towards the back leg, left arm up. Square the hips even more, so it'll take you out of the twist a little bit. Totally fine. If the back knee is down, start to lift it up. Triangle pose, so swivel the left heel down, press into the right foot. Take a block if you like. Feel the left, left waist roll up towards the sky. Left arm can stretch up, can stay at the hip too. Press down from your left sit bone to your left heel. Soften the left waist down towards the yoga mat. And just like in your Anjaneyasana, glutes forward, navel back, chest proud. Press into the feet. Use the strength of your hamstrings to lift the torso up. Feet stay as they are. Right arm can stretch up. Left hand can move down the back leg. Press into your big toes. And then bend the right knee, windmill hands to the inside of the right leg. Turn the right toes out a little bit if you like. Lizard pose. Don't worry about where we're going next. Take a minute and pause. If the right hip, right knee doesn't feel quite right, well, you can wiggle it around a little. And you can stay right here. If you're going to the next version, I usually like to put a little height in my left hand. Uh, sweep right arm back, and maybe you catch left foot. Just like before, you're finding the hugging in rather than trying to like jam your pelvis towards the ground. Cobra in the back if you've caught the foot. Pain free range of motion. Slow unravel. And downward facing dog. Child's pose when you're ready. Stay where you are. I'm going to talk. So we're going to do half splits or full splits. Um, we're going to do it four times, 30 seconds on each side. So it might really feel like not that yoga uh, feeling. This might be a little bit more technical. Try it on. So we'll do right leg forward first got my timer here so just like we did before you're balancing on your left knee cushion it if you like flare the right toes right leg straight if you want to start to back it up into full splits move the left leg back a little bit this time all you're going to focus on is squeezing the left thigh forward you're going to do that. There's so many actions happening in the legs. Right now, you're only thinking. Squeeze the left thigh forward. And even squeeze your glutes a little bit. You're still breathing, even though you're on a timer. And then to get out of it, you can either come through Anjaneyasana, hands and knees, gently plop out of it, and switch sides. 
So left leg extends in front of you, root the left heel down into the ground, squeeze the right glute forward. Check in with your breath. And then use your breath to gently come out of it. Take a moment and pause on your knees. And then you've got right leg forward, left knee down. This time all you're gonna think about is squeezing your right quadriceps, so the top of the right thigh, into the pelvis. A lot of times, like if we were former dancers or maybe even cheerleaders, uh, we just kind of want to like turn out and splay the hips apart and use all of our stretchy muscles to find our splits. If your pelvis is nowhere near the floor right now, but you're engaging your muscles, you're better off. Gently come out of it. Switch sides, left leg forward, right knee down. Right foot comes back any amount. Squeeze the heck out of the top of the left thigh, draw it into the pelvis. You've still got some engagement in the core muscles to protect that low back. Drawing back with that left thigh and gently come out of it. Okay, we're right on time. Right foot forward. Remember, no pressure to draw the left knee back, but go for it if you want. This time you're going to squeeze both thighs in towards one another. And we're just trying it on for size. It doesn't mean that um, one way is going to be your best way. You might have a favorite, you might not. Gently soften the right knee, switch sides. Left leg forward, right leg back. Use all of that muscular energy we built up to squeeze those inner thighs in towards one another. gently back away from the pose. All right, last one. So this time with your right leg forward, so you're listening, you're not doing it quite yet. With your right leg forward, you're gonna press the right thigh, the right foot forward away from you and you're gonna pull left heel forward. So this time, if you wanna get pretty stretchy in it, you can. So half splits or splits, push the right foot forward. Left heel moves towards the right foot. So a lot of forward energy. If some of you are pretty deep into this and it feels like something you want to fold into, by all means, make it your own. All right. Back away. Take a moment and pause. See how that right side feels. And then left side, left heel stretches forward, right heel moves towards the left heel. Just 
still breathing. And yes, I do have a timer here if you're wondering why I keep looking down and keeping myself honest. All right, feel that last breath there. And then slowly, mindfully come out of it and roll onto your back as much time as it takes. Bend the knees. Feet as wide as the yoga mat. Cactus your arms. So elbows bend 90 degrees. Forearms to the wood. Well, I'm on wood. <laughs> Whatever you're on, carpet. And just let the legs windshield wiper left and white. Or left and right. It's been a day. And you can let that motion get a little bit smaller. And when you're ready, come into a comfortable place to rest. So after all of that hamstring lengthening, it might feel good to keep the knees bent and knocked in towards one another. If you want traditional Shavasana, Legs extend out long. Let the teeth separate in your mouth. Be aware of what's touching the yoga mat and what's not. Is there anywhere that's gripping in your body? what feels soft. And roll over onto one side at your own pace. If you want a longer rest, and I know sometimes in the studio we get so comfortable in Shavasana and then we have to get up here, you can stay. And use the assistance of your hands to press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Take note of how you feel now versus how you feel when you started. And is that significant to you? The light in me honors the light in each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me from your homes this evening. Namaste.